Sonic, the heart of your system. I'm Leo Walter for Kit Guru here with Luke, and we're going to talk about processors because we've 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 he's just got through the launch of 10th gen Intel Cascade Lake X high end desktop. Mm -hmm. I think that's the full range, and AMD Threadripper 3000. Yep. I've got some topics on my piece of paper, and we're going to try and keep this to half an hour. I can't. I can't. I can't. There's no point in no, pretending no, no, that's going to happen. I is can't. There? I can't. Conciseness um, is not one of my uh, not one of my strengths. Luke's not yet seen my points, although he's probably looked across. Uh, but the the basic topics are fairly obvious. So I'm going to chuck some points. He's going to speak, and I'm going to listen. Uh, my opening question, though, is: What do you think about Linus in his rant about Intel's launch? <laughs> of 10th gen high end desktop, which was oddly enough more about the way they handled the launch than the actual products. It was very entertaining, <laughs> I can say that much. It was really funny actually. And to be fair, I think he raised some like good points in all now, honesty. Now it's, it's possible, possible the ladies and gentlemen haven't actually seen this video. So to summarize, when, when were both of these processor families from Intel AMD due to launch so to summarise, they were meant to launch on November the 25th, both at 2 p.m. UK time. However, uh, I believe the US press got more advanced notice that Intel were going to change the date because we were we were all quite surprised that they were going head to head at the same mm. time because that's very unusual. I mean, unusual? To, to, it's, it's never happened. It's, no, it's extremely rare. I no, mean, no, no, that doesn't... no, no, it's never happened. Okay, well, sure, sure, never. When, when, never, never say never. When but, have two okay. processor companies ever launched on the same day? Well, no, you're right. Actually, no. never. Yeah, it was. No it was the same time. It's like, what's this about? This it was crazy. It's not coincidence. Well, it was funny because 2 p.m. UK time is 9 a.m. GMT Eastern. Uh, sorry, 9 a.m. Eastern yep. time, which is a common time. Yep. So if you pick the date, you almost certainly know the time, unless it's CES yep. or Computex, where you know time zones are different. Every Corsair launch is Basically, 2 p.m. UK time. Every graphics it, card, every CPU, everything important yep. is generally 2 p.m. UK time, 9 a.m. Eastern yep. Standard Time for US. So the fact that the dates were the same, it was kind of obvious they were going to be the same time. Correct. But then I think the US press got some, or North American, I should say, because obviously Linus is in Canada. I think the North American press got some advanced notice that the date was going to change. And then I remember... Date or time? Time, time, sorry, time, time, need to be correct. Well, actually, it depends on... Uh, no, no, it doesn't. If no, you're no, in no. Hawaii, no, then the date no. was changing. If you're in Hawaii, I mean, te technicalities, okay. technicalities. What about Australia? Leaving, us, leaving aside the Hawaii contingent... It's not but, fair to leave out Hawaiians. But in terms of the east, east and West Coast America thing, because they moved it specifically... Far west. Moved it specifically from 8 a.m. 800 to 12.01, so it's that one minute past, just to make sure you get the correct date. So the UK time was meant to be 2 p.m., Yep. and it was moved to 8.01 a.m., Yep. which if you look at West Coast time, like you say, which is important, is one minute past midnight. On West what Coast day of time. the week? On a Monday. On a Monday. <laughs> On a, Monday. <laughs> a minute past midnight Sunday, as essentially. It's like, what the... What? Everybody should still be watching the NFL at that point, as far as I'm concerned, but that's another topic. But this apparently the, some form of sport. Yeah, it's, it's it doesn't involve it's motorcycles. It's just. Anywho, no. back to the launch. Yeah, but I think so. The, the UK, or I guess we got notice kind of very late in the day on Thursday evening. I was actually on my way to football at the time, and then the email came through, and I just kind of the pulse was raising a bit and the adrenaline kind of kicked in thinking uh oh I've either got less time to get it ready but um, obviously we spoke internally with the mm. team and decided it was just, it made a, more, a lot more sense for the viewership to see head to head Cascade Lake X versus Threadripper 3000 rather than launch a bit early I think what Linus did with his ram was really it was good to be fair because I think um, a move like that when we've known for over a month or at least four three or four weeks that that oh. was going to be the date and time yes. was known for a long time because yep. this was surprising yep. because this launch Intel sampled really early which is great because it gives us lots of time but the fact that it was sampled so early meant we knew the date and could guesstimate the time really early for that then to change so close to launch because Thursday evening that gives us Friday and then I mean at this point in time every every day of the week is a working week so 
like everybody's working Saturday, Sunday, everybody's working silly hours just to get this done. But that's really not a lot of time to change everything because you have to change all your charts, you'd have to change your right. entire this, video. This, this is the point, in case it's not crystal clear. If you've got, in this instance, these two launches simultaneously, it means Luke can do his, all his testing of all the uh, relevant processors and the 18 core 1090 XE mm -hmm. and the 24 core 32 core Threadripper is obviously going to be in the mix it's not like one's an apu and one's a you know, no they're head-to-head -head -head head -to -head. realistically so yeah. you're testing these parts against each other he's then constructing charts and such like when he's doing his videos dropping in the charts left mm -hmm. right and center and it's it's a lot a lot of aggravation if intel pulls for as intel pulled forward you've got two options one is you do the intel thing x hours earlier in which case those charts you suddenly can't have the threadripper figures in mm -hmm. because the threadripper hasn't yet launched yep. And it then means for all time that video makes no sense whatsoever. And the page you can update pages quite easily. Videos you can't once they're on YouTube, yeah. they're baked. Although Linus's approach was quite entertaining with the uh, blurred blurred bars. Ah. That was quite. That was quite. That was smart. That was yeah, smart. Yeah, you yeah. got to give him yes, credit there. Yes, the, him play, and his fair team play, were. Fair play. They were and, smart. And instead of which, the the kick your approach was to hang on till two p.m. and mm -hmm. have common charts for both things and therefore you've got all the figures. So you and be able to discuss head to head. Exactly, well, yeah. and be able to discuss rather than essentially have to have two scripts because otherwise you've got this absurd situation that at this hour of the morning, 10 on 80 XE is the most powerful processor or whatever it might be. In certain scenarios. In certain scenarios. And then the clock ticks down and suddenly <laughs> 10 on 80 XE looks not good and Threadripper is the best thing you've ever seen ever. <laughs> and that's the thing, Intel moved the goalpost for a few hours, a few hours. But this chap had obviously seen the comparison and they didn't want him to be able to say it, he and many others. It's a ridiculous situation. And then today we're doing this, what day is it, Wednesday? Uh, I don't even know what day is, it's just some day after launch. It's Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. And... Uh, yeah, sure, let's go Wednesday. Yes, thank you. And uh, Steve, <laughs> Steve from Game of Thrones <laughs> yeah. this morning has done his sort of 2018 video of uh, processors. Hold up, you're going to get flagged for that. Oh, you might, might get flagged. <laughs> I'm going to put a clip of Steve in the video as well. So full credit. These processors have just launched and Steve's roundup for 2018 is to say, what am I doing here? This is Linus and Steve. And what am I doing? Okay, anyway. Well, they're two really good oh, channels. No, oh, oh, <laughs> never mind that. <laughs> never apologise, never explain. And... He's already saying that Threadripper 3000 is the best super duper high end processors of the year because we know now what's happening this year is done. And 10980XE is the most dis biggest disappointment. It's like, what? <laughs> so moving the launch, I mean, it, it didn't build up any goodwill, did it? Mm -mm. Um, so, do you think. Steve from Gamers Nexus is correct to say that Core i9-10980XE is the most disappointing processor of 2019. I think it's it's perfectly reasonable to say that. Yeah, because, I mean, we've seen the audience consensus that they're just not happy with the level of performance and the price. I think it's perfectly reasonable to say that. I guess one counter-argument would be there are still valid reasons for why you might want the 10980XE. I think the best reason that I've seen a lot of people mention, and I think the conclusion we've come to, is if you're still got an X299 motherboard, if you dropped a thousand dollars on the 10 core 7900X back in July 2017 when it first launched, and now you need a pretty big shot in the arm and a good mm. performance upgrade, it's a five minute drop-in upgrade and you're still spending a thousand dollars that was affordable back then yep. and it's probably affordable now, it's not two thousand dollars, <laughs> at which point cool. AMD, dem it's a bloodbath yep. when you go beyond this, yep. it's a AMD demolishes yep. everything. It's as Although, simple as that. Although, my personal view on this is, if in the past you bought yourself a 6-core 7th gen or an 8-core 9th gen, I think you're now looking at a 12-core 10th gen. But that that's just a question of performance for money. I mean, it, it, we're, we're bickering over details. Although yeah. I am at the moment, because the, the 10th gen Intel, although it's now launched and you've reviewed it, you still can't buy it, can you? Everything, it's all on pre-order. And the prices at the moment in the UK appear to be higher than dollar prices. Yeah, we don't understand. We look, I was looking just yesterday and having a conversation with Luke, um, who's busy trying to sleep actually. And the eighteen it's about two p.m. or something. Yeah, the, the eighteen core exactly hadn't woken up. The eighteen core Intel, which is nine nine seven nine dollars for one KU pricing. Yeah, which is we don't already know what the retail uh, price. is. But the, the pre-order price here in the UK is eleven hundred pounds. Which for anybody who doesn't know the currency conversion. 
with the, the way the, the pound is at the moment, one to one for dollars, yeah. or, or even at that price, slightly less than one to one. Mm. So if it's a thousand dollars, you'd expect nine fifty to a thousand yep. pound would be reasonable because mm. of the tax situation. But to be more than the dollars, more, that's and more than really the grand, insulting. But, and so suddenly it's like, hang on a minute, and you're you're then moving towards Threadripper territory. Yeah, you this are. is the problem. That, and... That's really tough competition mm. because you're only then two hundred and fifty because AMD was the other way, where it's thirteen ninety nine dollars yep. for the thirty nine sixty X, which is thirteen fifty pounds. Yep. So two hundred and fifty pounds away from Threadripper. I mean, the 3960X just demolishes it. If you can use the threads, which, to be fair, a lot of applications can now. It He's demolishes it. I've said Threadripper. Luke, what do you think? So, sorry, I got, <laughs> I, got, I got excited. I got excited. But yeah, yeah do, do continue. Sorry. So the, no, no. The, just, so the two parts, the two parts, there are only two parts, are the 3960X, which is 24-core, 48-thread, and the 3970X, which is 32-core, 64-thread. Two parts for now. Two parts for now, extra part coming, that's further down the page, and TRX40 platform. Mm -hmm. How good is it? it what's the, the biggest superlative you can think of, or the best word instead of good? It's just epic? Well, I don't want to use epic because, you know, that's the, the server, I guess. <laughs> oh, that one wasn't planned. I'll, I'll be here all week. <laughs> um, it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy. Honestly, the performance that you get when you look at the value, because this thing is batting against, because if you spent £2,000 one month ago, or $2,000, we should say, that would have got you the 18 core 9980XE one or two months ago. Yep. Um, obviously, the older Threadrippers were high performance in certain applications, but they had the challenge with the NUMA and the memory accessibility and the PCIe on subsystem. Win on Windows? On Windows. Just, but you just, to bring a, just to bring another YouTube channel into this, uh, Level Wendell One Tech, Level yeah. One Tech, who he's done, he's done repeated work about this because he's mm -hmm. proper hardcore uh, li uh, Linux. About to say Linus, Linux, <laughs> and uh, he has demonstrated quite, quite categorically that the fundamental problem with the big WX Threadrippers is Windows is the big issue. The architect, the, the topology of the processor looks. Mm, but it's quite clear that Windows is adding its own cup of pain to the thing and Linux can use the cores. With Windows, half half the processor workload is figuring out what the heck Windows is going to do next. Yeah, I think there is more to it than that as well, though, because you do have cores with memory or access to the memory control Nearful. that sure. is off die. Yeah. Yeah. So even, I'm, I, look, I'm not a Linux expert. Li Linux, I'm not a Linux expert. I use Linux for my mm. servers, but I'm not an expert when it comes to Linux. But I think it is fundamentally the topology and the architecture, mm. the way it's it's built, is a challenge in certain workload. Rendering applications where you might not need direct memory access, fine. We've seen the tile-based renderers, Cinebench, Blender, those type of things. The older WX parts were really, mm. really powerful, where you can carve up the, th the threads as tiles. However, in certain situations like 7-zip, certain workloads, I think compression was the one, which is particularly memory bandwidth intensive, the performance just tanked below mm. Intel and AMD mainstream parts. No, Premiere, right. you have problems if you're working with high-res footage. But yeah. with the new Threadrippers, you do not get any of those problems. I think the best way to describe it was what I said in the review, which is the IO die, which is separate from the CCD, so the core mm. chiplets, that is an absolute stroke of genius. It was it proved uh, useful and smart for Ryzen 3000 on the mainstream AM4, it is an absolute stroke of genius for Threadripper because it just alleviates all of those issues that you saw previously. So I think the best way to describe it, it is literally no compromise. It can game fine, provided you don't get really old, somewhat questionable games like Far Cry 5, where you can just reboot into game mode and mm. it's fine. But otherwise, game mode is basically not required. Um, the heavy core count performance is superb. The light core count performance is superb. The memory and PCIe accessibility, you just don't get problems. It's just a no compromise processor on a no compromise platform because now, the platform is fantastic. Now, TRX40, uh, I'm going to come to my own recent purchase, which I, I did in a previous uh, within the past week, actually, because uh, I've just, I've recently bought myself a Threadripper 2000. Uh, I was on Threadripper 1000, and now I've moved up to 2000. I'm still on X399, but TRX40, it looks quite expensive. It does. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Entry level motherboard, the absolute bottom of the stack is four hundred pounds. Yeah, and you're and you're looking at five hundred pounds is what you're required to get uh into the mainstream. And there are a lot of five hundred pound yeah. motherboards out there, and then you can creep on to uh, six and I think 
the Gigabyte Extremes, the top of the pile at 850. 850, yeah. yeah. Right. So and that has a lot of features. <laughs> so 400 pounds to 850. 400, 500 pounds from, from the new motherboard. And that's therefore got to be added to the processor. You might might be carrying across your quad channel DDR4 possibly. Yeah, probably. You can, and you can carry across the TR4 cooler, even though it's a new yeah, socket. Yeah, but the, 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 pro, the platform, the uh, TRX40 motherboard, that's just a whole different level of how much PCI Express does one person need. It's just, again, epic, I'm gonna say. <laughs> my vocabulary is clearly not my strong point. I, I, I like it. numbers, not words. <laughs> I, I hated it when AMD announced the name Epic. Oh, it's such an epic name though, isn't it? Uh, because it's E-P-Y-C, and of course it's all up rather than E up and P-Y-C down. Uh, and it's just like one of those, ugh. But you know, the, the, the data center kind of yeah. IT buyer of businesses these days might be the person that uses Epic and Leet in their general day-to-day yeah. -day vocabulary. So it, it's, entirely know, it's entirely possible. Yeah. But when you think Xeon, which is an entirely manufactured word, and yes. it's been around since the dawn of time, uh, I suppose it's possible that Epic might live for another 15 years considering Well, if they keep delivering the performance, then yeah, you wouldn't bet against it, would you? Uh, well, <laughs> yes, quite. So, it's Epic. Yeah, the, <laughs> but the, the real thing that I was impressed by is the switch that has been long, long overdue, in my opinion, which is the fat pipe between the chipset and the CPU. So now you've got a PCIe Gen 4 eight-lane pipe between the chipset and CPU. So if you want to hang high bandwidth devices off the TRX40 chipset, which in itself has plenty of PCIe connectivity, mm. you can, and it's going to be realistically no compromise. If you want to do quad Samsung 970 SSDs in RAID 0, so a massive quad RAID 0 array, you can hang those off the chipset without limiting your bandwidth realistically. Mm. You cannot do that on competing platforms. Now, the reason that I, as I said previously, I says bought a Threadripper 2920X, apart from the fact it's cheap it's been discounted heavily i bought mm -hmm. one for 330 pounds whereas Bargain. the 16 core is it's still uh, about 20, 700 pounds yeah it? exactly they've barely been discounted which says to me that um because amd has said they're going to continue selling the 2000 series and the yep. x 9 platform but that's saying to me the 12 core is not long for this world i mean fair enough but um given you've now got the am4 platform why would you have a 12 core threadripper when you yeah. have I, I, I totally get it's, that. It's only good for upgraders because the AM4 Ryzen 3000 chips, especially with the Zen 2 architecture, mm. are better buys in my mm. opinion. And, I, and I'm, I'm not clear in my own mind whether the 16 core Threadripper 2000 will be long for this world. I mean, it hasn't been discounted yet. Maybe, maybe not. No, if but, it's 50 quid cheaper than the Ryzen 9 3950X, you buy the Ryzen 9 every day of the week. With X570 moved yeah. to Gen I mean, 4. Yeah, and, okay. And, There's and arguments you... for quad channel and the higher memory capacity that typically yeah. delivers. There's argue for the PCIe lens, but the Zen 2 architecture and TSMC 7 nanometer is so much better than anything we've previously seen that it's worth the compromise for PCIe and memory support, in my Go, opinion. Going back, a point you touched on there, uh, the IO die in the new Threadripper is what process and what <laughs> size? So We've had a few conversations about this over the past week or two because it basically is loot, so just, I've just seen this thing, what the hell is going on? Yeah, it's uh, just, but, it's an absolute gargantuan. So it's uh, Global Foundry's 12 nanometer process technology. So the core chiplets, as we know, are TSMC 7 nanometers because you get the benefits of the, of the power efficiency and the performance mm. of the TSMC 7 nanometer process for cores and cache. You don't necessarily see those benefits for, um, should we say, less complex um, situations or kind of uh, logic like we see in the IO die. So 12 nanometers Global Foundry, approximately 8.34 billion transistors, 416 millimeters squared, if I remember off the top of my head. And we were discussing- You raised a really good point. Did that's I? bigger than That's bigger than a GTX 1080 and not too dissimilar to an RTX 2060. Well, so the IO die right. size is GPU size. It's massive. There Absolutely we have it. massive. Uh, and that, what sort of power are we talking for the I.O. die, do we think? Don't know. I really, don't know not, not even a clue? Not, not a, it's 50 watts this or that or... Really, I, I no. don't know, to be honest. So it's, it's basically, well, it's a cut down version of the Epic I.O. die because mm. the Epic I.O. die, based on some SEM imagery that I, one of the, um, one of the German sites, I think, posted on somebody on there. So, mm. some really good piece there. Gone, gone. Can't check remember out. the name. If we, I think if it was we Hardware were... Lux, it might have been, um, oh, okay. or somebody who presented it to Hardware Lux. Some really good analysis on there. And um, the IO die is similar to Epic, but it's a cut down version. So instead of the 128 asterisks PCIe lens mm. that you get with Epic, you get 64 
on Threadripper. Now, not all of those are usable as you would want, but mm. you get 64 Gen 4 lanes instead of the 8-channel memory it, controller. Is it 48 that are usable? So 48 are usable for mm. general-purpose PCI yeah. lanes from the CPU, so for like expansion slots. Then you've got two sets of four, so right. another eight, which are usable based on the motherboard vendor's preference for right. uh, and NVMe that, so that, or pick, SATA. Pick your options on the... Yes, yeah, so yeah, you basically, yeah. from the CPU, you get 48 general purpose lanes, Gen 4. You get eight lanes dedicated to, typically dedicated to M.2 devices, so NVMe SSDs. And then obviously you get eight lanes reserved for the chipset connection. Right. So that's where the 64 uh, comes from. Is that 64? Yeah, just check my maths. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's 64. Now, I've actually put down, I've put foolishly somewhat, the final note I've got here is 3990X. Mm -hmm. But I... I I think we've got to keep on going with this. Yeah, we do, yeah. So 3990X, <laughs> were, there were rumours circulating entirely unofficially a month or so ago that, uh, so 3960X is 24-core, 3970X mm. is 32-core, uh, 3990X would be also announced at the same time and then would launch in January. And then it didn't get announced along with these two parts. Mm -hmm. And it's now come along at the launch of these two parts uh, as coming in 2020. Yeah, in 2020. Which to me says Computex. You'd think either CES or Computex. Yeah, I be but so you see, with CES. yeah, but you see that it could be the big reveal. Um, so the the point of it being is 3990X is 64 cores. Yeah, so that's eight. 128 threads. It's the full yeah. fat way. So now, eight full chiplets, and therefore has to be at least four thousand dollars to make any sense. And common sense says five thousand. If fourteen hundred, yeah. two thousand, you got double two thousand plus a bit for luck. You're looking at five thousand because the corresponding epic seven grand, isn't it? Uh, yeah. So the what was that? The, the seven H twelve is obviously the the beast version, yep. but the is it the seventy seven forty two? If I remember correctly, is the higher powered, higher clocked version, which mm. is seven thousand US dollars. Mm. Now there's a few things there. So if the rumor of the, the original rumor was correct, and if it was uh, an, uh, announced to launch in January, that's obviously CS. We'd be seeing it at CS. <laughs> If instead it's during 2020, that says to me they might pull a cat out of the bag. But when you consider in recent times, they've announced months in advance and then been slow. And then they've delivered. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the 16 like, yeah, the came along late. Yeah. So I, I don't see, therefore, that this is going to happen at uh, CES. That's a fair point. I think, to be fair, there's so much buzz and so much excitement about these processes. They don't really need to align the launches <laughs> with the trade shows <laughs> they because they create they can't, their own they exposure. Can't, they can't handle all the winning. <laughs> too, too much winning. I can't believe I'm saying these words, but... There's too much winning at AMD. They just and they can't they can't win enough. They they're delivering prices. again and again. They and must it, get they just, so bloody bored. Go, they they go back to Austin and win a bit more. They're like UPS. They just always deliver. Yeah, I knew. Today. I knew. But I knew you like. I that like one. your style. I knew you like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> there are other delivery yeah. companies available, of course. I'll put that one out there. For, there, there aren't actually. Perfectly. No, per there, there really aren't. If you want, UPS is just my rubber. personal favorite. Yeah, yeah, quite. So. 3990X, let's assume it's for Computex rather than for CES, yeah, which sure. will make sense to me, and let's assume that every TRX for... I'm not so sure it will be Computex, because Zen 3 is done, and that's moving along quite quickly, I think. So that could be the buzz for Computex. Because uh, they want to keep up this kind of fast-paced cycle. Because what was... So uh, Zen... So Ryzen 1000 was February 2017. Yeah. Ryzen 2000 was, if I remember correctly, April 2018. Yeah. Ryzen 3000 was July 2019. Right. So kind of Q3, Q4 right. 2020 might make sense for the next yeah. iteration, which right. in turn could bring the next Threadripper along with this. Maybe Computex would be a bit late, actually. What? Because Threadripper comes out when the new Z launches, does it? No, because you'd think Threadripper would be before, so it's not getting tangled up with the kind of the buzz and the hype that's grown for Zen 3 and, and the foresight that's grown for Zen 3. Perhaps. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I don't see that if you've got... Because Zen 3 is completely unknown to us. All we know is that they have, they AMD have said is that it's completely new architecture, which... Yes, could, I think Forrest said that. Yeah, and, 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 that, and that could mean anything. Yeah. That, that could mean anything. Um, if they... To my mind, I mean, it depends on interpretation, and given that's marketing type speak, sometimes these things make more sense with hindsight when you actually know the answers. But when you're looking forward, you make a bloody fool of yourself. If, for example, AMD did a process shrink on the I/O die, and they freed up a load of space on the same uh, socket, 
So your uh, on your desktop, your AM4 on X570, there's no reason why X570 won't continue as a platform, although they'll probably call it X670 and come up with some tweak. Yeah, but, so AM4 has still been committed to for longer. Mm, so you, you could still have the same socket potentially, but if you suddenly gain a load of space inside, you might suddenly move some cache on, uh, onto, the, onto the package, for example. And so cache is in a level four type cache rather than a level three cache, which is aligned to the core yeah, chip yeah, yeah, yeah. It's exactly. But the point being is, it's right there as opposed to DRAM, you know, yeah. DRAM, yeah. Um, or Optane. Uh, yeah, and so if you put cache right there, then then it suddenly that 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 would count to me as a new architecture. Yeah, it would. Now, well, you, that's you, what we saw with Broadwell on the desktop, wasn't mm. it? And that was quite a. That was it was the 128 megabytes of it was basically a level four cache, wasn't it? Mm. So you got a, a pretty healthy slice for the iris. Mm. Was it the plus or the pro? I can never remember. But for the iGPU, and there were instances where, like you say, that made can't remember a good performance mm. boost. Actually, oh no, it would be a bloody good thing to do. And obviously, yeah, that that would be loads. if you if you've got a, a die shrink for for the I/O die, which is currently huge, and therefore if you gain the space, and therefore you don't have to change other stuff, and you. Mm -hmm put some stuff in there you know simply add in some cash and 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 away you go yeah. so put it on our io die point i should say the threadripper and epic io dies are huge the ryzen one is smaller mm. it's a different io die but it's still big even but, compared and, and to the it's, chiplets, it's, it's, the still, core chiplets. It's, it's give or take half the area of the yeah i think it was like it was, i can't remember exactly and the space it's, big, it's bigger than the core chiplets yeah. which are like 74 yeah. millimeters squared so it is big yes yeah, yeah. And the thing about so uh, so Zen three so I, I don't see any reason why uh, Threadripper sixty four thre uh, sixty four core thirty nine ninety X can't come along for Computex the next year for example and then Zen three can do whatever it does, um, but if that comes along at four or five grand that's quite clearly playing to a tiny niche market I mean it's going to be you know t it'll take titles like they're going out of fashion. <laughs> it'll, it'll be it'll be champagne and and it begs the question to me which is when's the iMac Pro going to go AMD AMD who knows who knows because that's using the 28 core Xeon isn't it so isn't like, it just yeah so I guess one of the asterisks we should put in is obviously Threadripper 3000 um, is just oh, so much better than everything else but there's still that 28 core Xeon there which mm. is the 31 is it the W3175X which is Skylake X. That's, is that third one? Because they've got the 3275X now, haven't they? Which is... I don't think that's the X. I don't know if that's the X. So the 3175X was like the overclockable. It was the enthusiast yep. version, but it was still on the, was it 3647 platform, six channel DDR4, literally a handful of motherboards mm. <laughs> pretty much in the world. When you say handful, you mean two? I mean, no, I think, I think Gamers Nexus said one of the bet vendors made like 50 units. Of, oh, sorry, the, sorry, you mean quantity? No, no, no. Oh, I, yeah, I, 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 but there are two yeah. models. For the, for, the, for the enthusiast version, yes, I guess the yeah. server version, yeah. obviously you got yeah, the server models. But I guess that's kind of... So Gamers Nexus has done some really good coverage saying they're going to rebench that and retest that. That'll be interesting. Um, don't really know if that's a real competitor to Threadripper because number one, is significantly more expensive mm. anyway. Plus, it's got a lot of kind of asterisk points with it so it's still six channel memory i mean that's six is more than four right but it, is is it sensible <laughs> this is why you do the analysis now i do the, know six is more than four i like maths yeah. with the 3990x there's two points that immediately crop up i mean you obviously you can ask the question which is who the bloody hell needs such a thing uh, and that's in itself stupid because the answer is no one needs it but we want to see we want such things to exist so you i you, strongly disagree you move the you move the the, the move everything forward there are and always it, people who need as much compute power as you can give so make, giving them more compute power for a better price allows them to expand their business in ways that they mm. couldn't afford no, to do otherwise no no I, no, no, I, I totally agree opinion. no no but I'm, I'm looking here looking at because this is the oh, bizarre like, that's, that's thing no no but, it, but in such recent times it was like your four core process and my god they've gone to six core yeah, yeah, yeah. might have eight and then you gotta go 10 12 14 16 i mean then you look at the intel high end desktop stack and the fact that they dropped 16 from the recent launch yeah which the is one kind, kind the of one obvious. skew they don't have is 16 so you can't do head to head with it it's I like really why. Except, no 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 you don't wonder why you know why <laughs> No. Say why. Yeah. Say tell the microphone why. They Luke. just didn't want to be uh, basically one upped by the Ryzen 9 mainstream part, 16 versus 16. So Because it's always... AMD has done too much winning. Yes, because Zen 2 is just a superb architecture and Skylake is looking a bit long in the tooth at the moment, mm. realistically. <laughs> God. <laughs> 
that's bold of you to say that. Somebody, somebody told me once not to say, not to be hyperbole. So I'm just saying a little bit long in the tooth. I think when, everybody can make the general case. When was that? When was that architecture meant to have been retired? Retired? I don't even know. Well, like before now, put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I mean, and this is why you come here for these facts, these yeah. figures. <laughs> ten, Look, ten nanometer Skylake was, was a, meant to have happened in 2017. Yeah, Intel, a, Intel, yeah, ten nanometer. Curve. I'm going to play devil's advocate here. Yes. Everybody wants to bash on their 14 nanometer, and yeah, you know, the power efficiency is just in the. It, it's, but, just, no, no, it's, no. It's They're terrible. 14 nanometer. Intel's 14 nanometer, either plus plus or plus plus plus. I can't remember the math is, test. Yeah, at this God, point. Well, they, they haven't pluses. told us. Is is truly impressive the fact they've it's been able to yeah. eke it out and move it forward and whether it truly is 14 nanometer anymore or whatever who knows after all they're in charge of their own fabs it's their process they can do whatever the heck they like all we know is it's not 10 nanometer which mm -hmm. is a lot more than the number it's there, there's all sorts of other stuff they did or failed to do with 10 nanometer um that, that has gone wrong apparently things like cobalt being brittle where everything just broke repeatedly yeah the materials were changing yeah a, a, a lot of, of stuff changed it's not just 10 nanometer but the fact that the previous process the 14 nanometer plus 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 they've managed to push it keep it going year after year increase core counts on with some horrible consequences but yeah power is like power and heat are nasty nasty yeah. nasty nasty but uh the fact it's kept going as long is deeply impressive. They I mean, do need some credit for that. Can you that, imagine if AMD was still having to use bulldozer? <laughs> if for some reason, isn't if, bulldozer the one that shall not be named? <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Harry Potter no, reference. Well, there, no, no, no. We do it here. We do it. <sighs> can you imagine if if AMD had similarly had a catastrophe with Zen and had gone, damn it, we can't do it. It just doesn't. It's not a thing. We will make bulldozer better, and it'd be like, oh. <laughs> And we'd have, we'd have we'd have a 400 watt processor by now. Well, the Threadripper's not far off 400 watts. And the so Skylake back has. to that nice segue. Not that you. Oh, I haven't, I haven't actually written that down yet. So psychic. The TDP of Threadripper 3960x 3970x is 280 watts. 280 watts, yes. The, and TDP on the mainstream and largely mm. on Intel is just a number that you ignore yes so uh, your 95 watt desktop part could easily draw 160 180 200 yeah. watts depending on vCore so if we look at the Ryzen 9 for example the 105 watt TDP 3900X 3950X their PPT so their package power they're allowed is actually 142 watts mm. and the power consumption is more aligned to that package power mm. with Threadripper and this is the same with the older 2000 series Threadripper those TDPs are the package power limits that are delivered to it under stock conditions have I mentioned I've bought a Threadripper 2920X you Has have I have. Is it, that's 180 watts, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> and believe you me, if you don't uh, enable PBO in the BIOS, oh. it caps the power hard. <laughs> so, how, how did I, you find that out then, Leon? Uh, well, I did a quick uh, Cinebench 15 run, which is, uh, I mean, it's a really quick and dirty run. So, basically, time limits play no part because the thing. But boosts and it and it hits limits in about a microsecond, and it went up to did I tell you four point one gigahertz? I think I did. Sounds about right. And then it capped. 3.4 climbs to 4.1 3.4 mm -hmm. climbs around I, I enable PBO in the BIOS and which basically is let it sort itself out yeah. when I handle the power and give you some good stuff I've got proper cooling I've got proper power supply it's just it's sticking to the rules 4.1 Mm -hmm. it's just like well, thank you very much That's, that comes to a perfect point because I think PBO is the best way to overclock the mm. processes these days and mm. I, I know like enthusiast wise and fun wise I mean we like overclock and it's fun but PBO for day to day usage in my opinion is the best way to overclock these Zen processors Zen 2 processors mm. because the precision boost algorithm is so smart mm. so you it's like GPU boost on the graphics card side of things where you throw the cool in the you can at it and say here you go do your thing now the static overclock you might get on a 3950X maybe 4.4 if you're pushing it 4.5, but 4.3 to 4.4 is probably reasonable for an all-core day-to-day usage, mm. reasonable temperatures, reasonable cooling, reasonable voltages. That's a 200 plus megahertz reduction from the maximum boost clock of 4.7 mm. gigahertz. Now, I know you don't see a stable 4.7 gigahertz all the time and it's only one core and you know this and that, but you do see a reduction in performance in gaming if you're using the lower average uh, the lower all core overclock Be because PBO you don't as, as we were having this discussion the other day the thing is that uh, for example if you do Cinebench you'll, you'll see everybody when they're using Cinebench whether it's 15 or 20 will do a single core run and an all core run mm -hmm. And when you're talking about a quad core processor, one and four, fair enough. When you're talking eight cores, maybe. When you're talking 24 cores, <laughs> one, 
24. It's like, what's that all about? 24 times bigger. It, well, thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Um, it. But and it, and it does highlight the thing about uh, manual overclocking, which is the when you lock it at a certain speed for all cores, that really hurts when fewer cores are running. The thing is, yeah. for some of these processors, even from my baby 12 core, uh, yeah, four or six is a lot less than 12 is a hell of a lot less than 24 or 32 so you're in the realms of we're having this discussion we're trying to figure out how many cores uh, we should actually test at um, to get a sort of a, a day-to-day kind of figure mm-hmm. um, certainly four yeah four but is we're not reasonable. sure if it should be eight but we think four it, so one what's the point I mean that, that's Windows checking for updates and that's your email popping off to check for downloads I mean one is nothing it's absolutely nothing yeah, so I guess one kind of gives you a good interpretation of the single-threaded performance, which in theory can scale. Yes. A, a, de- a decent interpretation, <laughs> oh, yeah, because yeah. the boost clocks kind of throw a bit of um, kind of uh, smoke onto the mm. mix there, don't they? I guess, yeah, on your point, four or eight threads is quite reasonable. I know a lot of it kind of in the... Okay, my background's engineering, so mm. on the engineering and manufacturing side of things with like simulation and the software that they use there, which is quite compu- very compute heavy, a lot of the licenses and workloads are sometimes mm. locked down to four cores or eight threads because that is what has been common. Don't know if that's smart these days, especially <laughs> with AMD and Intel really pushing hard because even on the laptop side of things, Intel's gone past four cores and some of the higher end stuff. Yes, true. Uh, four cores past eight threads. Mm. So, it raises this question. Yeah, single threaded had it has its use for a testing scenario like we're showing, but like you say, kind of four cores. What can you hit? Four cores. What can you hit? Six cores. What can you hit? Mm. Eight cores on these massive 18, 16, 24, 32 core parts. And okay, I know it's an unpopular opinion right now, but I'm going to give Intel some more credit there because the new 10980XE, the Turbo Boost frequencies, especially Turbo Boost Max 3.0, are significantly improved versus the 9980XE. So it's now up to 4.8 gigahertz, provided you've got a Turbo Boost Max 3 situation across Core 1 and Core 2. And then if you load 3 and 4 cores, you'll do up to 4.7 gigahertz. That's a high clock speed for a 4-core workload. And again, that needs credit. I know it's an unpopular opinion to give Intel credit, but they need credit there. That's good. No, Intel, about the one vestige of pride they can still hang on to is clock speeds yeah and, and especially for lightly threaded because I know people will say well it's an 18 core why do you care about 4 core work but the reality is you need the scalability so not everything you do unless all you do is spend all day rendering or you, using Blender or just constantly converting oh, yeah, videos but, that will saturate right, equals but that's, is, not, yeah. that's not reality for no, high end desktop yeah. for workstations that's reality for servers yep. that's not reality for workstation type usage especially if I talk about like simulations or CFD a mm. lot of the time you use less cores when you're developing your mesh and then you'll have very multi-threaded very parallelized mm. solver situations so you need that balance between lightly threaded performance and highly threaded performance and that's where the scalability for the frequency is really important if you can use fewer cores but then ramp up the frequency that's a good situation mm. to have and then obviously you need to ramp down the frequency because of the power budget yeah. across all cores so returning to the Threadripper's part numbers 3960x 3970x launch 3990x has been talked about mm-hmm. can we even claim it's been promised it's been promised 3990x has been, been, yeah, been, been, been promised 2020 which leaves two things for us it leaves a gap for 3980x which common core. sense says is a 48 core quite why they haven't sort of mentioned it uh, but then who knows but but that that is just sitting there and it's just like well yeah surely that's going to come bridge and the gap between 24 and, and 60 uh, yeah, surely it's, uh, otherwise it's a hell of a golf step yeah, up from 2,000 bucks to 4 or 5,000 bucks yes yeah, it's, it's and, a big big jump. and the thing is and I want to come back to this before one point first is I'm concerned about the clock speeds of 3990X because of the power that's a very very but good we'll come point. back to it in a second but first Part numbers, 3950X Threadripper. Now, 3950X on the desktop is your uh, 16 core Ryzen, Ryzen 9, 9 mm-hmm. on AM4 with X570. But we think there's also scope for a 3950 Threadripper mm-hmm. on TRX40, except the money. So, technically, it makes sense, but it cost I, the reason I think it makes sense and you know like what is it <laughs> the, 
the, the game was next to the 10980. Sorry, no, the 10980. No, 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 the 10,000. <laughs> sorry, no, the 1.098 times 10 to the power of was that four or five or what, whatever. Just, just, yeah, the, the 109,800 times 10 to the have minus heard, one. No. Have you heard De Bauer? Mentioning modern oh, ones. Yeah, I saw Steve TV. saying, I'm really sorry for you. Fair play, his English is fantastic. Oh, no, no, but no, no. He's in a you tough can't, situation. You, you can't not Roman, but, but it's just like, it's just the, the, the format in which he says numbers, and it's only because he's translating, and he's like, You don't say it's this way. <laughs> and well, we had like, a conversation with an Intel chap recently, didn't we? And said, How do you pronounce it? And they were kind of like, We haven't really been asked that. And it's like, Well, it's kind of important yeah. for our job to this is, this know is how thing. you pronounce this is the it. Thing. We, we run into problems with videos so um, NZXT Kraken liquid cooler for example is absolutely fine except of course we said NZXT whereas most of the world says NZXT you run into that type of thing once CPU-Z. in a while CPU-Z yeah. it's obviously CPU-Z we know this this is, this is just a fact uh, and then there are other things so for example cases the fractal design define R6 you have to get a kind of rhythm going because otherwise you just trip over yourself something crazy <laughs> And then they come up with these bloody model names and model numbers for bloody processors. And uh, the Intel Core i9 10980XE with 18 cores and 36 threads. Wait, isn't it te technically like Extreme Edition or something on the end as well? Uh, and it's probably got an R in a little circle and whatever. But it's just like, honest to God, do these people ever actually attempt to read these model names out loud? Or do they just go on the chart, 7, won't bother with 8, 9 after nine comes ten yes it completely ruins the look of it because it's an extra digit so it mucks it up totally well, they, can, they can count fine at least that's confirmed it's you make a fair point yes you make a fair, uh, although they went from seven thousand to nine thousand no yes. they, can't, they can't count fine no, well, We're they sure always that see. they always see you, and that makes you a hater that makes you an amd fanboy but wait did seven eight nine no 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 sorry got that wrong way around Eight should be there. I'm confident eight comes after seven and before nine. I'm quite quite sure. Anyway, of that. so the point being is if you people out there developing new products would actually have the courtesy to read the blooming names out loud to a camera and then watch yourself back and see just how it sounds, it'd be really appreciated. And I think you need to test different accents too. So we need at least a hundred different accents. Because your accent's fine, like I've got I, a, I've got I, I, don't, I don't have an accent. Well, precisely, that's I'm why it's fine. I'm, I'm Southern English. If you've got a strong South Wales <laughs> accent with a kind of bit of excitement in your voice, then it's, it can be quite challenging quite quickly. You're saying I don't have excitement in my voice? Plus, plus, plus re recording most videos at <laughs> yeah. four in the morning after 30 hour stints and very big uh, bags under one's eyes. That, actually, yeah, that needs to be the test. So, whoever's <laughs> naming these products, please check your product name with at least, you know, Let's, let's give them at least 25 different accents, at least 10 different languages, multiple cameras, write them and see if your word count is ridiculous and drink 10 cups of coffee and do it at four in the morning after being awake for over 30 hours. Then, then it will pass the... Actually, that's a new test. <laughs> we need to start a new channel. Kick Guru product names. That's what we need. The funny thing is that people think I'm the grumpy one. Really I'm not, I'm not I'm grumpy. This is no, perfectly just, reasonable yeah, advice. Yeah. Consider yeah. it's consultancy. But I, I think... What free consultancy? Oh, oh damn! No. What the hell have <laughs> you done it. there? Wait, damn! You, you devalued the work. Yeah. Anyway, so back to back to Threadripper thirty nine fifty X. So if you bought, if you had the processor, how much would it cost? It's got to be nine nine nine, hasn't it? I think if they could do it at around. 900 maybe 950 oh, yeah okay we're in the same ballpark though right yeah. so 900 mm -hmm. to a thousand dollars pounds euros mm -hmm. and then you're going to have your trx 40 motherboard yes so you're looking at 400 as we've established minimum because there's not going to be another budget chipset there's going to be trx 40 dark x399 was x399 yeah so a TRX40 is going to be a thing, and you'll you'll be having a, a motherboard that's taking a 16 core processor, but it's built to handle a 64 core processor. True that. Yeah. <laughs> too much winning. Too much winning. <laughs> oh, <God>. Such <laughs> such tough problems to have. Oh, dear. And then so you you're taking your 900 to a thousand dollar pound processor, and you're taking your 500 pound, and you go yeah, and that's that's 1500. And it's like mm -hmm. I, I can I can see the argument for it, but what what would the what would the chiplets be that go into it? This is a good point. So Epic can use up to eight chiplets, oh. but I'm pretty confident. So I think when we had the, the discussions with AMD, that they don't use all of the chiplets fully saturated if they don't need to, and and the, the core counts on the lower core parts suggest that is the case. Mm -hmm. 
you would think if there was a thre Ryzen Threadripper 3950X, which I think would be a decent name because it's Ryzen Threadripper rather than Ryzen 9 3950X, but the numbers indicate their performance is going to be roughly similar. So yeah. as far as names go, I think that could be a justifiable name. The Threadripper is differentiating that you get quad-channel memory, high-end desktop workstation-type platform, and yeah. more PCIe lens, and, yeah. you know, so that would be fine. But you would need, in theory, four uh, chiplets of four cores each, which yeah. would be two core CCXs, which we haven't seen for any of the mainstream Ryzen liner this we're far not, with Zen 2. We're not actually sure that TSMC is capable of cocking up their chiplets so badly they actually end up with any of those parts. Well, As in they'd have to be fusing off good parts. We're not sure. You think, yeah. We're not sure that they... Because it, it seems that yields from TSMC for the chiplets are so blooming good that everything's coming out. It's, it's a question of how many cores and how good is the part, yeah. not how can we save the junk, mm -hmm. which is where certain processors from certain manufacturers in the past, and they come up with a god-awful thing that limps along like a dog, and you think, well, that's the thing that was otherwise destined for scrap mm -hmm. and is now running a router or or whatever, yeah. or, or some awful thing. I guess the counterpoint there is, I watched a really good... Um, I listened to, to Linus recently, on I think it was on The WAN Show, and he made a really good point that I like, because I like this point where he said actually sometimes they are intentionally as we know fusing parts off oh, yeah, yeah, for yeah, the yeah. product stack no, for sure yeah. and this could be a case where they would intentionally fuse it off just to absolutely deal uh, not even the final nail in the coffin because i think consensus is that the 10980 xe makes very little sense except those really niche edge cases if you had a 16 core thread ripper which offered quad channel memory which is one of the niche use cases in favor of the 10980XE, which offered a bunch of PCIe lens, which is one of the use cases in favor of the 10980XE, and had a scalable platform, which allows you in two years to jump up to a 64 core part when you get more simulation work in, when you do more rendering, mm -hmm. when you got higher res video footage to deal with, that could just completely, just take the 10980XE out of our mouth completely. There would be no argument for it. Could do. I mean, at the price. I must confess that with the Intel 9th Gen High End Desktop, I was really surprised they had the full stack. Every one with another two cores, another two cores, another two cores. The fact that Threadripper is going 24, 32. I mean, I know there's the, the maths internally. It's different so between it's the monolithic and the Four times six and four extension. times yeah. eight. So they, they, they don't really have the option of you know the 20, making a 26 core. It mm. just doesn't work, thankfully. Uh, um, I'm hoping that it wouldn't. If, even if they could, I'm hoping they wouldn't. On a 27 and a half core. <laughs> don't. Could do that. But, uh, but the idea of uh, Intel's got this thing, and I mean, they've cut their stack. I mean, having removed the 16 core and having cut away the rubbish at the bottom, and he's only got, is it four parts or five? I forget. I think it's four. It was four. It 10, 12, 14, and 18. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Which, again, proves yep. that they can somewhat count. <laughs> 16 is clearly the missing yeah, yeah, one. Yes, quite, quite. But even so, you know, it's like, well, why have you still got the 10 almost? It's like, just move on, yeah. get over yourselves. Um, so there's that. I, I wonder about the clock speed. So 3990X. You go back to your whopping great big I.O. die. So yep. you've got 280 watts power budget for the entire thing. The entire package. The entire mm. thing, including the I.O. die, which is yeah. a significant part. The I.O. die being the equivalent of a watt graphics card. Well, I guess size-wise, it's kind of between a GTX 1080 or like an RTX 2060. Mm. An RTX 2060 is TSMC 12 nanometer, yeah. isn't it? Which I don't know how TSMC's 12 nanometer compares to Global Foundry's 12 nanometer, but... And right. we, we can never say like 12 no, but, versus but, 12 but, is 12 but, versus 12, but, but it's big. We, we assume the IO die is consuming a lot less power than a GPU. Oh, by, for all, yeah, for all we, the obvious without reasons. Without question. However, yeah. the estimates that I've seen put it in the territory of 50 watts. Okay, I, I'm not entirely... You can, you can actually see uh, in Ryzen Master, so there's a section in Ryzen Master, and I guess this is a good point to shamelessly plug our review and go and look for mm. the Ryzen Master screenshots. Yep where the uh, package power is highlighted as a, as a percentage of the total package power you're allowed. And then I think it's an actual figure that shows what power is being delivered to the CPU in terms of cores, and then the CPU in terms of other stuff. And I think HW Info also shows that info well. And I know Ian Cutrus on his Anantech reviews goes into a- Is it um, anyone you're not name checking today? No, no, his, his reviews are really good. Because no, 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 we like him, we like him. Doc, doctor. Doctor, sorry, Dr. Doctor Dr. Ian, Ian Cutrus. Dr. Uh, Ian yeah, Cutrus. Dr. Ian Cutrus. Thank you. So he's done something where, I think it was with the 3900X and the 3950X, I haven't been up to date with the most recent one, but he's looked at where you load a specific number of cores and then track the power based on how many cores are loaded, and sometimes there is a difference between 
um, what the total power package power is versus the cores only power and obviously that would indicate that perhaps that's the IO die. I'm just speculating there. I haven't read it okay. in enough detail. So go go read that okay, and, so, so he's do, t- he's, and tell he's, me I'm wrong. So he's doing some math and looking for the missing bit. Oh, mm-hmm. fair enough. Um, I mean, without a shadow of a doubt, if you, if you add up the power for each of the cores mm-hmm. and you look at the total, there's a bloody big difference. Yeah, so the that, cores are without kind a of shadow like, of a doubt. Yeah, they're um, like 6 to 11 watts in general, according to HW Info. And mm-hmm. it, it depends on, like, I think the 12-core 3900X is like... 10 or right. 11 watts Thank per you. core. So this moves on to the point, the point I was getting to. Before which I interrupted is, you. So. No, 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 it was an interesting interesting diversion. Um, and it gave us a chance to name check someone. Who haven't we name checked so far? There must be some. Have a little think. But um, 3990X, the implication is that if at the moment your 32 core is getting 6 to 7 watts per core, the implication is your 3990X, you're looking at 3 watts per core. Or something of that order, yeah, which would in turn suggest, as it's obviously exactly the same process, mm-hmm. would suggest a lot slower. It would suggest. Well, the funny thing is, the sixty-four core is the Epic Seven H twelve is also sixty-four cores, yep. two hundred eighty watts TDP, yep. roughly similar I/O die. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's an mm-hmm. SOC, but more or less the same. And the clock speeds, I can't remember off the top of my head, but they're kind of like. I think the maximum boost is like mid three gigahertz rather than like the four point five we're seeing with right. these ones. So the, the, the clock the, speed the, has right. to reduce oh, unless absolutely. that two eighty watts is just gonna be blatantly ignored. Well that would be yeah. interesting, wouldn't it? So if they were to just bust the two eighty watts to pieces and say, mm-hmm. Here you go, here's a four hundred watt CPU now, that would be interesting. Yeah, so the two eighty watts could be kind of the two eighty watts asterisk because again, Epic has this configurable TDP mode where mm. a lot of the parts are, if I remember correctly, two twenty five watts TDP and this mm. is the same with the standard 7742 64 core 225 watts TDP but you can configure it to a configurable TD up, TDP up mode which is I think 240 watts TDP and allows you to sustain higher boost frequencies for a longer period of time almost kind of like a precision boost overdrive yep. but with a specific cap that you're going up so that could be the case maybe it's a 280 watt TDP part but maybe you've got a mode that allows you to go higher. Just the inverse of the eco mode we've seen them bring in. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so eco mode being this thing in Ryzen Master where you can take it down one... Um, one TDP run. One TDP basically. ranking. Yeah. So your 95 watt part runs at 65 watts or whatever it might be. And it looks really like a very interesting thing Great to do. Great for home servers, for Plex. That Ryzen thing. Master. Ryzen Master. We mentioned Ryzen... I, th- <laughs> I, I think I mentioned Ryzen Master in something I did quite recently. Um, uh, was the Leo says video? I think, I think it was. It? Yeah. Where uh, just to reiterate, and now I've got the, the main chap here. So when Ryzen Master first launched with the, um, the, the first 1000. with Zen's, mm-hmm. it was terrible. It was a truly god awful piece of software that stunk yeah. to high heaven and put some appalling, appalling load on your processor. You're losing like ten yeah. percent Cinebench NT yeah. score, not so, like one t- such, NT, such that you couldn't get idle figures off it because the thing never idled. It was just absolutely <sighs> lousy. These days, Ryzen Master. Well, it's far better. I mean, we can say because it, it couldn't have been <laughs> no, 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 anything no, no, no. but. Yeah, that, that, that's not damn faint praise. That's just being insulting. Um, <laughs> uh, but if if in the past, Ryzen, as Ryzen Master, we used to run screaming from the room and refuse to use it. There were other things to use, and it, and it didn't do the job you wanted it mm-hmm. to do. And it misreported temperatures. Yeah, with the, the TCTL, which... Which I'd forgotten which about till this moment, which, which is, is just like... was what? still a bizarre one. Thankfully, none of the Zen 2 parts no, have that, so no, clearly... Indeed. So then, then, that was then, that was then, that yeah. was Zen 1 and Ryzen Master, and that was the the distant past. Yeah. And now we've got the new stuff, and we've got Ryzen Master. Now. Ryzen Master, I really like it. It's, I, I like it too. It does suck some of your CPU cycles. It does. So you will lose performance. So you can do this yourself if you've got a Ryzen PC. Load up Cinebench. You know, Cine, mm. Cinebench is not a real world test, as we know, even though it's a real world render. Who is it that but, said that, Luke? Uh, don't know. Many people, clearly. Uh, it's maybe Autodesk, because they're Cine, Cinebench's competitor, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> Tell us in the comments below who said that and your thoughts on that. Go on. <laughs> so basically, if you've got a Ryzen PC, Load up Cinebench with no monitoring software, or even just mm. HWM4 hardware monitor, CPU-Z, the good monitoring software we like to use. Um, not CAM and IQ, because, you know, some, some other... We've, we've noted that they can suck CPU cycles NZXT as well. NZXT CAM. I, I used CAM in my, my build because I had a, an NZXT, NZXT um, uh, fan controller. The fan controller itself I like, and I've got three SSDs and a hard drive for bulk storage. 
and my hard drive never slept. It was constantly ticking away. And after a while, I started to notice it. And when I looked into it, I suddenly realised it's because the cam software is constantly checking the hard drive. <laughs> Just to check the hard drive is still there. Constantly. And as soon as I removed the fan controller, plugged the fans into the motherboard and removed cam from the thing, the PC's been bloody silent. Uh, so the fan controller is great. The software... Oh. Oh. I don't know what I'm more surprised about. Your frustration at a piece of software that is... Uh, my stupidity! D- no, it's my stupidity! I think I'm more surprised about... Not sure is your frustration at a surplus to requirements piece of software. The fact that you have hard drives in your main PC. Oh, hard drive. A, oh, sorry, hard drive. The fact that you have hard... Wow. Three SSDs. Uh, I think they are one, two, and two terabytes. Mm-hmm. Five terabytes. And a, and, a, mm-hmm. and a ten terabyte mm-hmm. hard drive. Hard drive. Gotta get that out of the system, bro. How many, hard, how many SSDs have you got? Well, I've just got a boot SSD and then a, yes. a one terabyte scratch SSD for yes. local storage and video editing, and then everything goes out to the server, which yeah. has got a bunch of hard drives, which can yeah. sleep, you know, unless you shuck in those white label drives. Again, I'm sure everybody, hope everybody will know what that means. But no, fair enough. No, where, where, was actually, I? where was I? No, 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 I don't know quite. I think you just put the boot into me quite, quite, quite effectively, actually, no, and no, no. entirely justified. Just, where was just, I? So justifying an answer. Ryzen so. Master. We like Ryzen Master. Uh, I would it's improved li- massively. I would genuinely be interested to know whether Ryzen Master is in house by AMD or by some other scene because I've never, I've never seen it. Know, I've never seen any reference to Ryzen Master by. And and yet it's this kind of you have to really you have to look actually to find a download for it. It's, yeah, it's, it's not easy it's to not find. Obvious. The web page is not it's not no, great. No, it's not great. But no, when you download it, it's... AMD's web pages. Here's something. So I would like AMD. Uh, Intel has this uh, facility called Arc. Arc is so good. So good. Oh, so so good. So, if you so don't know, good. I don't know, I, why is it called Arc? Something to do with Noah? I don't know. Well, I, I assume that. Uh, but oh, I really? Assume it's like, <laughs> just, no, no, I, I, no, I, I did. I, I assume it's like okay, it's no. because the house is where all the stuff lives or something weird like that. <laughs> but, yeah, but you don't get two of each. Maybe, maybe that's a refresh joke that you get two of everything, is it? <laughs> You're thinking far too deeply about this. No, so, no, no. Intel Arc, arc.intel.com is where you go off and you look at uh, any processor thing and you can look at, you can compare stuff. So you want to look up Core 7th Gen, Core i, whatever, and do the thing and look at the what's it and go, well, which ones? Because they've got so many blooming products. And it's got everything in it's there. It's got everything. If you want to go back really, to like really, a 3217 really u for your laptop or something. Yeah, no, it's, know, it's a very, very good facility and it's where you discover things like Core i9 9900K supports V Pro. Yeah. And such like, and you go, well, what? But that KS doesn't. But K- and, and weirdness like that is how you discover stuff like that and 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 stuff, real detailed stuff. And then AMD, you come along, then they go, "Would you like to know about our processors?" And you go, "Well, I would." Okay, click on the one you want to look up. Thank you very much. And now click on the next one you want to look up. It's like, oh, for the love of God, this is just this is just terrible. Don't forget, go to Reddit. Yeah, don't forget that. I don't use Reddit. Well, well, you should. No, I I I I've heard bad things about Reddit and, and redditors, and and I've always been scared. Leo scared of Reddit. This is the headline for this video. Yes, but no, uh, Reddit, Reddit. Uh, you kind of hear this thing. People go down the rabbit hole once they disappear into Reddit forward slash A and D, whatever it might be, and then, then that's it. That that's the next three days of their life gone. Um, Sounds about right, actually. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I'm not saying it's an informed decision on my part. Uh, in fact, it's not an informed decision. But um, yeah, well, perhaps I'm wrong. If you if you use Reddit, if you like Reddit, go for it let us know if you can't stand reddit equally let us know um i th- i think we've established we've got one on each side of the i way. didn't say anything about my preference for reddit i just said i use reddit but, you know okay keep up to date etc plus the app on my phone keeps giving me notifications i haven't just turned it off yet so righty ho so there's that and what are we discussing? So Rise Master, we like Rise Master. So once again, AMD do yeah, AMD sort out your web pages, please. Yeah. Uh, well, like Rise Master, but it does suck some of your CPU cycles. You can test it for yourself. But, but it's overall, a hell of a lot better than it used to be. Far better than far, it used far to be. Better, far Although better. The, the, the CPUs are more powerful as well, so maybe those CPU cycles actually, they're stacking are actually on that subject. Low. What are you saying to me recently about Intel software? Uh, the performance maximizer. Yes. What are you saying? Good, bad, or indifferent? No, 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 not that one. The other, the one, the the um, the tuning. XTU, extreme the, tuning the very utility. Thank you. Yes. So, I I didn't use this for a long time, mm. and I, I used it initially reasoning. and thought I hate it. And yeah, and I that... think the reason was that it just wasn't very good. Yep. Back in the yep. older days. Yes. Where, again, I think that sucked some of CPU cycles. Yep. Now, fantastic. Really good piece of software. It gives you loads of information. Importantly, and you can check this in our uh, 10980XE review, is it gives you all of the multipliers that 
specific core loading will deal with. That's how we know one and two cores is forty-seven. Uh, sorry, forty-eight mm. X. That's how we know. Uh, is it 48? Yeah, of course, 48X. in fairness, you can do this if you have an Intel processor. Which no, you, the, these days refers. To, I presume. It's yeah, you can do it. So you can do it with XTU if you have an Intel processor. But that's the information you can't get on Arc, which is mm. really frustrating because yes. they used to give all the turbo bins, which is really, mm. really important because those turbo bins will tell you that twelve beyond twelve core loading, a ten nine eighty XE is a ninety nine eighty XE. Under mm. ten core loading, they are different, mm. and the ten nine eighty XE is faster than a frequency term. But if you want to find that information. Um, XTU is really good, has a good monitoring utility, seems pretty accurate, seems pretty low on the CPU cycles. Can't argue you know, as you can establish what it's doing once you've actually got the processor. Yeah, so But if, you if can't you... establish what it's going to do before you get the yeah, processor. Yeah, so if you're running a virtual okay. machine and you want to know what 12 cores will spool up to, then uh, yeah, buy the processor and then figure and, it out. And then you can figure out what it's doing, yes. Yeah, and Very if you're not useful. happy, then you're lucky. <laughs> you get in. <sighs> Where are we going to be in the first yeah. week of January? No wonder somebody no, 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 makes no, no, more no, no, than no. £10 billion a quarter. It makes uh, perfect sense now. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Anyway, moving on. Where will we be in the first week of January 2020? We will be uh, in my house watching the Niners in the playoffs, I hope. Again, NFL reference there. <laughs> and some Seattle Seahawks fan is just going to crush me in the comments. But I'll answer your question seriously now. Thank you very much. In the first week of January, we will be in uh, Sin City. For CES, it is Sin City, right? Yeah, it is Sin City. Yes, yeah, Sin yes. City. Yeah. Doing no sins, of course. Yes. Now, going back again to the dividing line, I personally can't stand Las Vegas. And I, 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 love think, Las Vegas. I think I think it's an awful place. Oh. But that's where CES is, and that's where we go. Um, and it's quite an intense week. Luke, on the other hand, loves uh, Las Vegas. Absolutely adores it. So yep. I'm looking forward to being told why it's so good, which should be educational. Because stuff. Shooting range. It's great. It's fun. I did that with Bryony. We, we shot yeah. guns, briefly. I mean, albeit it's like... Uh, which uh, guns did you shoot? We're getting off topic here, but no, this is important information. Uh, it was the baby package. It was the, they got different packages. And I think it, it was a 9 millimeter, wasn't it? Was uh, it the um, AR-15 type gun? Colt yes. Commando. Yeah, yeah, Colt yeah. Commando, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. I shot quite, quite. I mean, also shot a 50 cal. That well, was fun. <laughs> but aren't they $25 a round? Uh, no, the 50 cal is my birthday, so they gave it to me for free. Give me two rounds on a Barrett. Is it the M101? The Barrett yeah, yeah, 50 but cal the, sniper. The, okay, the 50 cal is, 50, is $25 per round. Not for your birthday. Which, well, fair enough. In that case, uh, my birthday's in January as well. I've just decided. Uh, my birthday's clearly in January, even though I shot it in April, yeah. So, we're going to be at CES first week-ish. Well, it's a kind of goes into the second week of January. We've just had the launches of high-end desktop parts from both Intel and AMD. And there is, in my opinion, a yawning chasm under Intel because we would typically expect a lot of laptops from Intel mm -hmm. or a desktop platform or something. And right now, when I look at the roadmaps for Intel, I just see nothing. Well, how old is Z390 at this point? How long has it been out? Is it like mid or end of 2019? Did, did that come along with i9-9900K? I think it did, yes. Which is November. So I was out at this point, yeah, but I think it was November yeah, 2018, yeah. wasn't it? Something like that. Yes. So that's pretty, yes. yeah, that's, that's getting on. So Especially are, by the time are, you, are you proposing that Intel should launch a new motherboard without new processors? Ah, uh, no, no. Oh, thank we, God Nobody that. needs that. No, no, no. No, no. no. no I mean, the, the speculation for some while, so without wishing to <clears> jump up and down any more on Intel, uh, but the 10 nanometer doesn't work. Their 10 nanometer parts <laughs> appear to simply not exist. Now, this is absolutely On fine. the desktop, that's true, yeah. At all. Well, you've got an ice lake in No, uh, you don't. No, you can, you can buy you the XPS. You do not have one, ice lake. Buy the XPS this is not one. true. It's not, right, I'm going to go on the Dell website. Right? You can buy the XPS 32.1. It looks like okay. a good device. I agree with that. The point was the ice lake was knocking around at Computex. And I went out to EFR in Berlin mm -hmm. and it was won. I don't know quite what win means in this context, but it was won by a... a a laptop from Razer who had this nifty little configurable processor you could go 15 watts configured to 25 watts yeah. dynamically rather than being locked down at the factory had a configurable TDP we heard huge promises about the graphics in Ice Lake although I've literally seen nothing to back those up I've seen an awful lot of charts about the, the graphics in um, Ice Lake but in terms of actually now show me something actually happening we went to the Intel Open House at the Science mm -hmm. Museum and we saw loads of laptops um, the thing I've never seen one I've never seen one outside of those events now if you can buy a Dell I'm going to say in terms of rounding errors and percentages it doesn't exist 
because it's a rounding error. We've 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 oh, seen. Right, okay, so you're rounding down to zero. Well, when it's point something percent, it rounds down to zero. Right. Now, the, my point being here is that this is we've been sent none for review. No. Now there is the slight snag here, which is that Kit Guru is primarily aimed at uh, the enthusiasts and gamers, mm -hmm. and these are all like quad core baby baby processors. Yeah, they're more kind of mobile works that yeah. work. Not workstations, yeah. but work type uh, well, they're, laptops. They're laptops that are yeah, competing with this. Yeah. And the Comet Lake parts, which are you know the, the 14 nanometer plus or plus laptop parts, are no, up to six cores. Pluses there. You need small pluses. Up to six cores. Yeah. And it's notable that the Comet Lake is like a gigahertz faster than Ice Lake. Yes, yeah, fast. And sucks less power. Yes, it does. Depends, I think. Uh, fair enough. I'll, I'll let you have that. But yeah. in, in the main, broadly speaking, give or take, you can either have Comet Lake 14 nanometers sucking less power than 10 nanometer ice lake or running a gigahertz faster mm -hmm. or a bit of both. And a gigahertz in a laptop, that's a hell of a lot of extra speed. Yeah, it, is, it just yeah. is. It, ju it just absolutely is. So that's up to quad core 10 nanometer. The thing is, the laptops that we typically um, play with for gaming purposes from Azus, MSI, uh, Acer, Aorus, Gigabyte, of, thank yeah, you, uh, and I'm sure there's another brand. Alienware, this and that, isn't it? Indeed. And those ones that are allied to a beefy graphics chip mm -hmm. are these days typically eight cores. Yeah, so they would be the H series processors, which are 45, which are 45 watts. watts. They, yeah. And there isn't even a sniff of 45 watts. Which is quite surprising because the 9000 series, which was a refresh of the 8000 yes. series, which was not. A refresh from the 7000 no. series because the core counts changed yes. quite drastically but they've been out not forever but they've been out for quite a while now they've because for, they're what process well they'd be 14 plus, 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 plus however many pluses i just yeah. i honestly lost count of the pluses but in other 14. words we're in a holding pattern that's the snag of it and and the thing of it being is that i mean the, the fact is that if you go out and buy yourself a gigabyte or a 15 that I, I reviewed some months back it's a bloody good laptop i mean yeah. you, you don't need a new processor you, you don't I mean if, if you can have something that's going to suck less power and, and run a more battery life and whatever great mm -hmm. yeah you'll take it but would you actually then because I mean those laptops they sort of reached the four grand kind of mark in recent well, times quite so the, the idea of ditching a you know a, a significant purchase for what reason but we, we had this uh, a year back when the Nvidia launches got out of step with the Intel launches so for one quarter they updated the graphics chip on the old processor, it was Q one of this yeah, year. Q one of this year, we're, we're still in the two thousand series with eight thousand series processors, yeah, I guess. That just was what before it was. the nine thousand series. Yeah. Precisely. So for Q one, it was like okay, well that's a bit of a problem. Yeah. Um, and then you everything got back into step, and here we are. And that's saying to me that I'm not expecting I, I'm not expecting to see new mobile pro, uh, graphics chips from Nvidia anytime soon I'm not expecting to see new processors from Intel anytime soon therefore I'm not expecting to see new laptops in in our world it's kind of hard to soon. justify a new laptop when it's the same fundamental hardware absolutely especially given what the market and the buyers look for when they're buying a gaming laptop Absol which is absolutely yeah no, 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 gaming desktop. completely yeah. agree and then on the desktop side of things we've currently got the uh, well Coffee Lake refresh i9 9900k ks kf. Mm -hmm. I mean, why did so this? Wait, what is it? The F, the U. Yeah, <laughs> no, just, I'm not, I'm not going through more. Check Steve's video. I'm not yeah, going through it, it, it's, 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 it's just, it's just painful. The, the idea is you segregate these things. So you've got the 9900k, which is the unlocked eight core, 16 thread, 4.7 gigahertz. When you're running on loads of power, and we're talking here like 180 watts. Mm -hmm. Although as we've recently established, depending on the motherboard, it could be 200 or 220 watts, yep. depending on how brutal the stuff is. And that makes a Some big, motherboards love volts. big oh. and that makes a big difference to thermals. By God, does that make a difference? <laughs> and that's the K. Then we've got the K S K S, which is the five gigahertz, gigahertz all, all core. Calls. Again, without the limitations. High and TDP. what was the warranty on that part? That was a. Uh... That was uh, one third of the warranty <laughs> on, the, on the cheaper K part, which was. A, kick in a the year. Teeth. Yeah, it's it a was year. One year. One year. Which but is I've never seen another one year no, processor from no, Intel. 
No, I, but I but, the, but the suggestion was it wasn't so much that they weren't uh, they weren't prepared to back up the part. Apparently, it's not really it, the reality. It, it, it's it? that they probably won't have any to replace it if it goes yeah, wrong. But that's just but, a, uh, uh, no. Well, that's a bad excuse because then they're saying, well, don't buy it because if it does break, you ain't going to get a replacement. Right. I mean, this, and then we've got the KF. Which is no graphics chip. No graphics which chip. Was, which was just pointless because you saved a few dollars. But now they've had a big price mm. drop and it's quite useful. The graphics chip, I'm going to add there. I like it for HEVC mm. encoded. Not HEVC. Um, the H264 encoded in Premiere. Mm. I like it. Just going to put that one out there. there, there you know, there it's is fun the, to bash there is Intel, thing, but it's credit. For some considerable period of time, when we're doing motherboard reviews, I would personally mark it down on a performance motherboard if it had graphics output on the I.O. panel. Because I'd consider it's taking up too much. You know, it's taking up space, particularly as they're using HDMI, and I hate HDMI um, for PCs. I so use DisplayPort. Bef- yeah, back so DisplayPort. So if you've got an HDMI on the I/O panel, looking at it, going, it's not a big thing, but it's a thing, and I don't need it. And who the hell uses it? There, there is the fault finding thing. It can be used. It's good for troubleshooting, yeah, or exactly. if you're selling your graphics card just before a new series drops. It, it, yeah, it, yeah, it does have its place, but I, I, I cannot get enthused. But just recently, it's a few months now, but Adobe has updated Premiere so it actually uses the Intel graphics. In a, you can use... It's quick sync encoding, basically, hardware encoding rather than... Because you, you've, you've got CUDA for NVIDIA, you've got yeah, the other uh, thing for AMD. The, thank you. And, the, and now you've got supports in Intel. And when they did it, it was like, well, what's the point? Yeah. Well, but the, who cares? And yet it works. No, it works. It really works. Really well. Really so well. I basically, mm. if I uh, ed- edit my videos on a 1900K... Um, you will absolutely tank all of the cores. Well, check out our Ryzen Threadripper review because I included Premiere or mm. Adobe Media Encoder performance for the Threadripper parts and all the other high-end desktop parts and the 1900K and the 1900K KS with the iGPU. And you need a lot of cores on a fast architecture, so whether that's Threadripper or whether that's the 18 core, to actually beat the iGPU. Mm. And the iGPU is using like nine watts. Oh, it's, it's, it's utterly like, trivial. It's, it's quite remarkable. Yeah. So the idea they offer a skew of the processor that's the same except without the graphics is like, but it's just become useful. <laughs> and you save some tiny amount of money. Yeah, so I mean, if you're saving like 30, 40 dollars, pounds, mm. and you're only going to play games, you're never going to use the iGPU, mm. fine. That's, yeah, not, great. Not save 30, 40 quid. Mm. That might take mm. you up to a better cooler on your graphics card. Might buy you a cheap mm. SSD. Mm. But for the same price, just mm. get the free chip. Mm. I mean, come on. Mm. <laughs> like, what? Yes. Just, well, just why, wouldn't, why wouldn't you take yeah. free? And you don't um, even need to use the I.O. ports because you still have your GPU mm. in, you just enable it in the mm. BIOS, it still runs mm. through. It just, yeah. <laughs> no, very true. So on the desktop side of things, we are expecting at some time, at some point, that Intel is going to update Coffee Lake to Comet Lake, which is still going to be 14 nanometer on the desktop with the purported Z490 or whatever chipset, which will bring God knows what to the party. Um, and the rumours again are that Comet Lake is going to be 10 core rather than 8 core on a socket which is LJ1200 I believe has been the rumour which would look new socket same. really that's oh, the okay. rumour I didn't see that rumour that's the rumour but nonetheless I mean whether it's the, yeah it's more okay. or less the same as 11. well it would need more power so yeah okay maybe so the thing is if Intel updates the existing 8 cores to 10 cores and it's on a socket that's approximately similar to the existing socket and they don't do anything crazy mental with the TDP or even if they do then either it's going to run a bit slower yeah. or it's going to be horribly horribly toasty and I I'm really struggling to see the good in this. Well, I guess it's, it's two extra cores, which realistically, like the 9900K is the best game in CPU. You might not use it in a way yep, that it's best, but it is the best game in CPU, especially if you're high refresh rate gaming with a very powerful graphic system. It's the best game in CPU. You probably don't need two more cores well, because, by extension, the 8700K was the best game in what, CPU. What, right. What's the part below the 90, 9900K? So that would be, in theory, the 9700K, I presume, is the one you're referring to. Which is how many cores? Was well, eight cores, eight threads, so it's a flat eight. Right. And that's a very good game in CPU. Right. Uh, and you go, well, that's the stack. And you're thinking, well, and then you move on to this 10 core, and apparently, well, I assume it's 10 core, 20 thread. I suppose it could be 10 core. 10 thread I, I sincerely hope not well it seems that the i9s are hyper threaded that, so that, that face I was just putting there was as the thought suddenly dawned because that thought had literally never occurred no 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 I hope well it might be a 10 core 10 thread version that's an i7 because we're now seeing some of the i7s are hyper threaded and the i9s are typically as we said the other day are 8 cores and above typically except the 
I tell you what, the one laptop it's school. a really nasty, nasty, messy piece of nastiness that's messy and nasty. Product stacks are always challenging to deal with, but this one's getting... Yeah, because okay. con conventionally, the i3, i5, i7 segmentation was quite easy to understand. Core i9, as a name, as we discussed the other day, mm -hmm. has it just become a total joke? I wouldn't say no, no, because you know, you know, it's Intel and it's Core i9, and a lot of people buy a new gaming laptop and they say, "Oh, it's got the Core i9. That's going to be great for games." It's like, well, not if you got like a GT740 by the side of it or the iGPU. But a lot of people buy that, right? I, but, say, the, but what did we establish was the most basic Core i9 you can that, that exists? Well, off the top of my head, it would obviously be the 9900, 9900K, you know, the F, whatever. You can get the Core i9, the uh, 98. 80 HK, which is the laptop version, which is, if oh, I remember yes. correctly, eight cores, but in most configurations, eight cores, 16 threads, but in most configurations, throttles pretty heavily. Yes. Below yes. that, the i7. Yes. Um, I think there's an i9 9880H or non HK. I'm pretty sure I did a review on it on one of the Asus laptops, which, if I remember correctly, was, I can't remember if that was six cores or eight cores. Comment below, but basically, yeah, you go from eight cores all the way up to like eighteen cores. That's the point. I think right. you're trying to try uh, yes. to get to. Basically, when you say Core i nine, you don't automatically think that guarantees that it's going to be the bestest thing that Intel makes. No, it doesn't. No. Because the the spread of things is so vast, and as has been said, if Intel finally, basically, what what is it that Core i three is meant to become? Is it meant to become quad core? Hyper, was hyper? With hyper threading, so quad core and eight, four core eight thread. I think so, yeah. Because because some some core i threes have been absolutely just like, dual core and so on. So if if core i three moves up to something worth having, and core i five sort of tries to fill the gap, uh, and everything shuffles together, then either core i nine has to once again become the pinnacle product, mm -hmm. or it has this sort of sprawl of products. In which case, it's like, well, what what's going on here? It, 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 the, the Intel basically Intel. What I'm trying to say here is Intel's many product stacks are just messy and huge. The, the, the range of products they have is just vast. They're quite confusing because if you we've well, proven that. Yeah, if if you go back to the Intel versus AMD, because you know that's the, realistically the comparison in the duopoly. Uh, when you move up the product stack, it's quite easy to understand. If you're buying a Ryzen nine, that is always going to be better than a Ryzen seven. Yep. Which is so. always going to be better yeah. than a Ryzen 5. You know, not including mm. price versus performance and slight changes in the boost clock. You're going from 6 cores to 8 cores to 12 or 16 mm. cores. Although the 3900X and 3950X are both 9 but different core counts. And then you're going up to Threadripper. Mm. That's quite easy to understand. Not yes. always the case with the no, Intel product very stack. True. Which in turn could actually take the legs from under your previous thought about uh, Ryzen 9 3950X, Threadripper 3950X. As in... I. Uh, same would they CPU. want to, same core count, same number, but one's one socket, one's the other. Yeah, and you can argue it either way, but it would mm -hmm. definitely, uh, it would, it would, the there'd be a very much a crossover. And yes, there would, which could be a problem. Yes, I, I, and for that reason and that reason alone, I think they won't do it. After all, they chose to call their twenty four core thirty nine sixty. They could have called it thirty nine seventy. But that might not have left the gap for the 48 core. No, indeed. And, and this is the thing. But when they when they came up with this numbering system back in the mists of time, they chose the numbers they chose. Yes, fair point. And fair point. at least we're not getting like a five on the end of it or something. Because the 5775C and when it started going like those, and they were just quite confusing to remember. The final topic of conversation, one we've completely glossed over, is Ryzen 9 3950X. Because we've been discussing everything else. 3950X, it came... It won, and we've kind of forgotten about it, and yet it is a game changer. It is. It was. It. It seems like it was so long ago. Probably because the number of hours <laughs> of sleep since then are probably like counted on one hand. But it seems like it was so long ago. But it wasn't. But it is. All the buzzwords, all all the, the praise that we give Threadripper, fantastic bloodbath, high performance. Ryzen nine thirty nine fifty X is fantastic. You get so much performance for a cost effective price tag on that mainstream platform which is 100 pound motherboard if you really want to might not advise Ooh, okay. that but if you really want yeah, to okay, yes. really I want mean to. X, X570 is not cheap X570 is not cheap but you know some of the 
180, 190 pound motherboards. I'm thinking of the mm -hmm. Gigabyte one at 190. The, the, the one or two the that tough, are a lot better than you expect. Yeah, that's the Asus Tough true. is a good buy. It's uh, that's about 210 actually. I think. Have you got that one? Ah, so that is a fantastic I, buy. I bought this. This is my purchase. I bought this motherboard. My God, no wonder you feel so, so disheartened. <laughs> and, I, and I didn't even go for the Wi-Fi version. Of this. Ah, yes, no one yeah, exactly, yeah, because yeah. I didn't really need it. No, but that, that is a fantastic board at £210. We use it in our VRM testing. Yeah. VRM, great. Power delivery is yeah. great. The features are good. Gigabyte's got one at also £210, yeah. which is good. MSI's one wasn't so great with the VRM. No, it, it's been incredibly variable with the X570, and actually I bought that quite deliberately for that very reason, because it's this weird thing that some boards that are dirt cheap aren't good, some boards that are ultra expensive are very good, and then it gets far more, it's not Murky. just hmm. the more you spend, the more you go, there, is, there are some hits and there are some misses, and that is a real hit. Yeah. Very, very pleased with it. To beat the power delivery solution on the tough, you need to spend a lot more yes. in Asus's own lineup. Did I so mention I spent my own money on that motherboard? <laughs> <laughs> What's that kicking you? Oh, it's your wallet. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quite, quite, quite. I can see the tears falling on the floor <laughs> from the credit card. But no, that's <clears throat> that's a really good buy. So if you spend <clears throat> 200 quid plus your 750 pound Ryzen 9 3950X. <laughs> Ryzen, Ryzen 5 3600. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a great ball, but that is clearly better suited with 100 yes, pound B450. Yeah, yeah. You could put the 16 core on the 100 pound B450. Yep. As we saw, the power yep. is perfectly fine, but you might want to spend a bit more for some mm. of the features that are justifiable in workstation, you know, theoretically perhaps better Gen memory 4, support. Gen 4, Gen, Gen, Gen 4, 4, Gen 4. Gen 4 is yes. good on the SSD side of things. I mean, mm. it is good. And you get our fat pipe down to the chipset with so S570. AMD has taken 16 cores and put them into a package. AM4 is the same size as LG 11.5X, isn't it? I mean, Roughly, they're the, yeah. they're I think AM4 is 13, 31 pins, isn't it? And 11. 5X is 1151 pins, I believe. Do you know? I didn't know it was 13 I think whatever. it's 13, I did, I've never pins. actually even thought about it. I mean, I, 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 I just looked at the area. Late one night. I just looked, did you really? <laughs> no, of course I didn't. What a dumb question. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I can't count to 13, 31. <laughs> what? Oh, this guy. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Am I that good an actor? <laughs> Oops, steady on. <laughs> this might take a while. <coughs> I've never smoked in my life. I'm right now thinking I ought to. Um, where were we? So thank you very much for that. Um, so in a processor socket that's very similar in area and size, AMD's yep. managed to get 16 cores in double the core count, double the thread count, yep. and the speed is not a million miles off. I know I, it's significantly less. It's 500 yeah, it megahertz is. off. It is significantly less. But yeah, yeah. Intel has the, the clock speed crown. I'm, I'm yeah, not yeah. going to take mm. that away from them because it's all they've got. So I'm going to leave it. And wasn't it a happy thing that when the 16 core came along and such like that Intel's prices started to come down a little bit because those uh, coffee legs have been around the £600 mark. And now they've apparently supplies picked up a bit. And now they can sell them for that. Isn't that right? So, yeah, yeah, well, I've seen some good deals on the 9900K and I think the 9700K. When you say F. good deals, explain. Good, de good deals compared to not good deals, though. Yeah, <laughs> but you see, this is the thing. Going back, uh, and I'm trying to wrap up here rather than re reiterate, but when you go back to the 9980XE at two grand, and then the one prior to that, which was 1500. And whereas in the past, it always used to be 999 dollars 650 pounds when that was the exchange yeah. rate. Yeah, well, that so, was until the 6950X right. 10 core, which right? And then everything went roof off, which was when yeah, yeah. you want 10 cores, you AMD forget about it, you go into and they, yeah. they and they just took advantage, and you can't blame. But it was a combination in the UK of the, the Intel pricing and the exchange rate, and we went from yes. 999 dollars. And they always say trade price, trade uh, trade price, and such like. Therefore, you can't compare. But nine 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 dollars, six fifty pounds. It's always six fifty pounds for the ultimate processor, and then it went to a thousand pounds, and then mm -hmm. it was fifteen hundred pounds, and it was two thousand pounds, and now bump half price again. And meanwhile, along comes AMD, and I'm sure AMD is going to take every advantage they can when they get the opportunity because. Why wouldn't they? They're a business after all. Why wouldn't yeah. they? Yeah. It's margins. It's uh, They need to make money. The, the biggest problem AMD's had is not making money. So we know this is going to happen, but... You've been doing all right recently. The last quarter they, was pretty good. They've done so much good, and the amount of money they made is so little. 
that, that that's just a fact but uh, unfortunately every penny extra they make is coming from somewhere mm -hmm. and unfortunately it's not going to be from Google is it um, so you know. <laughs> anyway getting back to happier news they've got 16 cores that are a bit slower than Intel's 8 cores in that frequency same frequency wise fre frequency yes in terms of clock speed but in terms of the workload they just stomp oh it's just, oh, it's just crazy it's crazy if you can stress all 16 cores so tile based rendering mm. uh, certain video encoding workloads especially x264 mm. Um, with things even like Handbrake, uh, Media Encoder, so Adobe Premiere Pro, 7-zip, mm. my word, 7-zip decompression. Zen has always been high performance for 7-zip decompression. It is, check out the Zen 2 numbers, it is beyond belief. The, going back to the high-end desktop, mm. but the Threadripper Pi is more than double the performance Tell of the what, Intel let's, let's wrap this up. Take us through processors from the from noob entry level up to wherever give us your recommendations at each stage as you see it well to be fair the start point for me would be the ryzen 5 3600 and the reason being is i haven't really spent much time looking below mm. that i think below that the last gen ryzen so the 2000 series are bargains they absolute oh, I bargains 2700x on itself like 150 or something i think the 2700 at one point it was like mid 150 pounds yeah, yeah i, I think I, the extra a little bit more but it's just like what uh, the, no. the 2600 i think is just over 100 pounds you're like that's six cores 12 threads uh, and it's a good gaming cpu yes it's the older architecture <clears throat> okay but my so, word, that's so a bargain. ryzen so the ryzen 2000 parts then if you've got x470 and you've got say a ryzen 5 then i think we'd say for that money you go and get yourself a ryzen 7 2700 2700x if no, don't buy the X. No, there's so no need to buy the X. Right. 2700, 2700 for Ryzen 5, 2600. Because that is a good processor. That's a bargain. And if you've got the X470, easy piece. Yeah, no problem. That, that's easy. Okay, that, agreed. The caveat, I would say, is if you're Ooh. gaming. So if you're gaming, the Ryzen 5 3600 with the Zen 2 architecture is so much better at gaming that even though their price is comparable and you're losing thread count, if you're gaming, the 3600 right. is a far better processor for gaming. Okay. Probably. Okay, so we've got a crossover Ryzen 7 2700 to Ryzen 5 3600, depending on what you're doing, yep. and then obviously then you're into the should you. So should you put a Ryzen 5 3600 on an X470 board or an X370 if you got it, or B450, or do you need X570? No, you don't need X570. It's perfectly fine. I mean, it's still AM4. Yep. You get a BIOS update, but there are still some caveats. Yep. So we explained in one of our earlier videos the early headaches with regards to GSA profiles and backwards mm. compatibility with AM4 and Ryzen 3000 on the older boards. Yes. That's still the case. Yep. So you do have to watch out for the BIOS. There are some bugs, especially if you're using 300 series rather than 400 series chipset boards. Mm. You have to watch out for it. And as a, just a quick side note, People have complained about the new Threadripper platform. It alleviates those issues, and that's important for workstations where people have to make money. So mm. it's annoying you have to buy a new motherboard, but you don't get those you're issues. Not bug, you're not bug fixing. Yeah, it's exactly. It works, and that yes. was a problem. We can't say <clears> that Ryzen 3000 has been smooth sailing because that has been a problem. The boost clocks seem better, but they weren't in the early days. Mm. They weren't no, so good. True. So Ryzen 5 3600 or Ryzen 7 2700, both good deals, depending on what you want, whether you want a bit more compute power right. in certain workloads because you haven't got the yep. preferential AVX performance. Okay, oh. all, all flat out gaming. You want a stonking gaming PC. Where if you, you want a fast gaming PC, high res, high refresh mm. gaming, uh, fast graphics card, 9900K. Mm. Yes, you can save yeah. some money, get the 9700K, but at that point, just get the 9900K. Yeah. It is the fastest gaming processor. It's really good. If you are happy not getting those final 10, 15% frame rates, or if you're capped at maybe 120 FPS rather than kind of 140, 165, Ryzen 5 3600 is good. 3700X is good if you do a bit of work mm. on the side. I really like the 3700X personally. And then when we're going on beyond gaming where you do want productivity performance dues too. So you do gaming, you want good refresh rates, but you also do a fair bit of video editing for yep. your bike videos <coughs> or your skateboarding or your holiday and you do some rendering in Blender and you do some, I don't know, some encoding of your shadow play footage. Tell you what, I actually think this is something that's changed significantly in the past five years is that back in the days of print magazines but also websites when people were writing stuff, you could write a review on any laptop or whatever. Mm. Frankly, if you had a keyboard, it didn't matter what it was attached to because you're yeah. just writing words. You could actually tap them out on a phone um, sometimes. I've done that many times. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
doing video is a different story. Apart from that, you obviously need the camera gear. You've actually got to do something with the video. If whether I mean, we we work on our own videos, uh, but if you're sending the video to someone else, you know things like internet connection becomes a significant thing. Because oh, you're yeah. talking to, and, and, and Dropbox using <coughs> six megs a yeah, second of yeah. your thirty-six meg upload, yeah, yeah. which is annoying. Yeah, but. But you, you get into stuff like we want really fast internet connections, far faster than the average civilian because of what we're doing. And when it comes to video editing, uh, in the past, when we'd, when we'd say and semi-professional workloads, we weren't necessarily doing it ourselves. We were on benchmarks. We weren't living with it. Now we live with it. Mm -hmm. The idea of pegging your 6, 8, 10, 12 core processor, we do it regularly. Yeah. And the difference we're seeing with these new processors, it really makes a difference. It makes such a difference to have Premiere hammering away, driving all those cores, and you can still do email and do other stuff. Can you imagine if we had to do our job, and this is the same for other content creators on YouTube, if we had to do our job, if the market was still stuck of four cores, no, exactly. eight threads, it would be horrible. No, no, it's it the thing, be... you click export, you'd walk away for a terribly long time and you wouldn't be able to use your machine at yeah. all. That's the thing. And that's it. not, it's, that's it's not a... feasible sometimes, especially with this mm. previous launch. We had three parts launching more or mm. less the same time. Mm. If you have to walk away from your system for two hours mm. while your video renders that it really is tight mm. on these launches you can't afford that so this is literally the time is money mm. argument mm. and it, we're in a really good situation now because we've like, got so much choice we're, we're actually uh, we, we, are, we are definitely <laughs> living the dream but and we you know as they also used to say you know, do you own dog food you know, companies. What? Well, dog food manufacturers. Do you actually eat? Do you actually try your own products? Like, I'm not touching that. Oh, okay. um, is, do you use your own products? It's like, yeah, these things that we review, we actually use ourselves, and we actually see the benefits. It's you know, gaming. Yeah, it can game. Of course, it can. It can game decently. But what are you looking at? I'm still trying to find out how I can sneak the 3960X into my own system. <laughs> <laughs> Could be a tough one to. Maybe I just say they got lost by UPS. <laughs> uh, no, UPS doesn't lose things. No, at all. They're wonderful. DHL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, 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 no. I'm, I'm not. I'm not some bad things about people. It was stolen by Intel. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> yes. Um, so where did we get to? So you moved on to high-end gaming. So you were saying 1900K is still good. But still the best gaming yep, processor. Indeed. But you, you do need to be looking at high refresh rate. <clears throat> you want every last frame per second. Otherwise, 3600 is still mm. good value and 3700X is still good value. Yep. I wouldn't recommend the 3800X because you can just overclock 3600, yep. 3700X. It, yes, uh, which is, we've had this with AMD where the, where the, the extra 50 bucks or whatever for a part or 100 bucks. And it's like, well, what are you getting for that? It is Not very, a really worth it. Especially when Precision Boost 2 is so good. Yep. It's funny you say about workloads and how we're living it now, but mm. my time out, my old job, taught mm. me a lot about how this mm. stuff is used in industry, which is perhaps why I had a slightly different perspective on the 10980XE, mm. because the drop-in replacement is of big value. Mm. No, no, I totally agree. <clears throat> and after that, where do we go? So after that, you would have to be looking at you want gaming performance, you want perhaps high refresh rate gaming performance, but you're also interested in content creation. Mm -hmm. So you're doing quite a bit of video editing because you're a hobbyist mountain biker. You take drone footage, you love your skateboard, you've got family videos. Maybe you're a wedding mm -hmm. photographer or you do videography for fun. You do some blender rendering, rendering maybe. You've got a 3D printer and you're working with heavy STLs or simulation, that type of stuff. But you don't want to break the bank. That is firmly... Ryzen 9 3900X and 3950X yeah. territory. The 3900X is kind of, it's got lost in the uh, the, the, the fuzz a bit with mm. the 3950X and all the new thread ripper parts it's and Intel Hyundai stuff. You know. It's only 12, yeah. only a dozen, yeah. I mean, come on. But actually, it's, it's realistically, yeah. if you're looking at heavy workloads like that, it's better value mm. per core, plus you get the free cooler, which doesn't add that much value, but you don't get it with the 3950X. If you can get it at five hundred pounds, like it should be, not five fifty to yep. six hundred, like it's inflated to, the twelve core is still a fantastic buy, and five hundred is affordable. Seven fifty, you're starting to get yeah, to that point where it's, 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 quite, it's quite steep. It's Although quite steep. we are then into the does it drop into your existing platform thing. So if you buy the thirty nine hundred, ideally you want to ally it with an X five seventy board. In which case, you've got the you. you if not, if, you if need you a four seventy. Yeah, you, if you want Gen four. Right, but the point being yeah. is, you need an AM4 board, yep. common sense or not common sense. Ideally, you're dropping it into an existing AM4 board because that affects the money, big, it affects your buying decision mm -hmm. big time. So you've got your, have you got an AM4 platform that's quite decent, you can drop in the 3900 yeah. in which case you're buying the processor. Have you got an X399 board in which case you can drop in a, a Threadripper 2000 processor. Mm -hmm. 
Have you got an X299 board? In which case you can drop in that processor there. You know, all these upgrades are relevant and valid if you've got the existing platform and you just want a bit more for sensible money. Yeah. And then you move on to the super duper high end, yes. which is dominated by AMD. The yeah. winners, so, so the be, winners. Yeah. <laughs> Beyond 3950X, obviously the 10980X is the logical comparison there, but there are very niche edge cases mm. where you'd have to seriously consider that. If you need quad channel memory, and not just the memory bandwidth that brings, mm. the higher capacity, because realistically we're only seeing 16 gig <clears throat> DIMMs at the yep. moment. So if you want more than 64 gigs, which is perfectly reasonable, that's not an outrageous thing for a workstation. If you're working with heavy STLs, mm. doing a lot of Blender rendling, maybe a lot of Adobe stuff. Re Blender rend rendling? Rendling, it's a, new, it's a new type of rendering. It's really advanced, trust me. Uh, if you I <laughs> believed he'd counted the pins in an AM4 socket. I'm I'm not letting that go by. So Are you got a clown when you're hat doing, to Photoshop on there. Please? When you're doing your blender rendling. So when you're doing a lot of rendling, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is, this is, so you're doing a lot of blender work. Yeah, maybe you need more than 64 gigs. Yep. And that is a justification for the high end desktop platform. Threadripper is a good buy there. The 2970X. Yeah, that is the right one. Yes, 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 yes. Not so much because yeah. you do get problems mm. in different workloads because of the memory architecture. Yep. If you're already on X299, then yeah maybe the 10 wx the did i say wx no you said x okay 2970 wx w is then a, that's, uh, it's not a big stack but no yes, no yes, but it's no, enough no, to quite, confuse yes, me yes yes if you're already on x299 and you just want a <clears> quick <throat> drop in upgrade and you're not that concerned about value and you're going to overclock and you're going to overclock mm. because you get good headroom with the 10980xe and it does become quite a bit more mm. competitive versus the 3950X, which is a far better mm. buy, realistically. Mm. But it does become a bit more competitive if you're overclocking. The 10980XE, in those really niche edge cases, might be worth considering, but they are niche edge cases. In general, I mean, probably more than nine times out of 10, the 3950X, far better buy. And if you've got a blank sheet of paper, a big checkbook or credit card, and you're looking to buy a motherboard and Threadripper processor, so you've got your TRX40 motherboard lined up yeah and you're choosing which processor is the choice of 24 core 32 core purely how much money have you got if you can afford it you go for 32 core and stuff it that's what you do it's how much money have you got and how much do you want to spend is that 700 pound going to be better used elsewhere can you get a fat really fast ssd setup can you buy a graphics mm -hmm. card that can offload some of your rendering duties or you know gaming on the side yeah can you invest in a good cooler and have some money left in the bank so you can put that towards a future upgrade or something yeah. can you buy a nas and some good hard drives so you don't have to have a mechanical <laughs> spinning hard drive inside your workstation can you do those things I see that coming it's like a train <laughs> <laughs> sorry I got to hammer home, home that point it's all about NAS oh, right and, and servers oh, whatever oh. can you use that £700 better elsewhere if not then you know the it's 32 the, causes us yeah, yeah 32 cores is pretty sweet D like we said in our review, you have to have some really pretty demanding workloads to even stress 24 cores fully, never mind 32 cores. So Premiere, you'd have to be doing <laughs> yeah, so Premiere. Like, like they say like it's a revelation. You need quite a lot to, to stress 24 cores. But, it's 24 cores. When, yeah, when Intel brought out 18 cores at high-end desktops, it's just, yeah, it's that the was logic. a how much? I mean, that was that was a big, big. There's a lot of money. Big, mm. but, but, and, I mean, and core count, 18, sorry, yeah. But it's a huge. My God, how many cores? Yeah. And then now it's like 24 cores, 32 cores. Like, wow. <laughs> but it's something that unless you've worked with the processors, unless you've tested them and seen it for yourself with your own specific workloads. I mean, mm. reviews will tell you kind of information that is specific to the reviews or the biases and the understandings of what the workloads that the reviewer deals with. So biases in, are they really interested in rendering or media consumption? Are they interested in CAD and simulation and virtualization? So the reviews will have those tendencies, which is why you should look at a widespread, but it's really hard to say to somebody, does your workload use all 32 cores? It's like, well, I don't know. If it's tile-based rendering, then yeah, it's going to scale. Mm. But if it's Premiere Pro, then it's like, I don't know. Probably not. Yeah, maybe yeah, not. You yeah. use an 8K red footage, at which point, yeah, yeah you use well, yes, yes. 100 meg hits. In which case, if you're using 8K red footage, then frankly, you can afford the bloody 30. Yeah, if you spend stop, 100, 100G on a camera. Stop, then. stop messing around, just buy the damn thing. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's how buy, just buy the damn thing. That's, <laughs> that's our considered advice. Yes. Yeah, but if you want the all-out best performance with realistically no compromises other than those to your wallet, mm. Threadripper 3000. It is really <clears> that <throat> simple. Superb platform. AMD, not yet sick of winning. He said it. <laughs>
If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit the bell button, subscribe. We'll alert you to new videos as they become available. I'm Leo Wood for Kit Guru. I'm Luke Hill for Kit Guru.